I want you to ask yourself, how many AI subscriptions are you currently paying for? I know for me, it's about five or six, and it totals almost $100 per month. Now, what if I told you that you could just pay $10 per month, less than probably any of those individual subscriptions, and have access to the exact same models and tools for literally one-tenth of the cost? And the best part is it's all in one place, so you don't need to switch between five or six different UIs or worry about your memory or information getting mixed up between different providers. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be demoing to you something called Chat LLM. Now, this is my abacus.ai. It's a very interesting tool that I've been using for the past few weeks, and it's pretty much an all-in-one platform that combines all of the AI features that you'd use into one single tool with one subscription cost that is cheaper than most of those other subscriptions just on an individual basis. Now, full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. However, I have thoroughly tested the product. I do actually believe in it. It's something that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's why I'm comfortable sharing with you. Obviously, you're under no obligation to buy, and I'm just going to showcase a bunch of features, and if it can help you, great, and save you some money, perfect. If not, then you don't need to use it. So with that said, let's get into it, and let me show you Chat LLM and the features that it has. All right, so this is what the UI for Chat LLM looks like. I just switched it into dark mode here from the settings, and if you do want to check this out for yourself, I have a link in the description, so you can click on that, go to the page, check it out, and see if you want to purchase it. Now, right here, we have this Route LLM. Now, this allows you to select the different uh, LLMs that you use, so you can just pick one that you do want to use, or you can let it automatically route the request based on what LLM is best at a specific task. We'll cover that in one second because I know the number one question everyone's going to have here is what is the usage, right? If it's just $10 per month, how much can I actually use this? That's the number one question I had, and I want to go over that really quickly because I think that's pretty important. So for this, what they give you is 2 million compute points every month per user, okay? So it's $10 per user per month, and the thing is you can have multiple people kind of in the same workspace if you wanted to share information and stuff. So let's say it's just one person using this, you get 2 million compute points, and these are not the same as tokens. If you were using the most expensive models and only using those models, then this would be 15 million tokens for things like Sonnet 3.5 or GPT 4.0. However, if you're using some of the less expensive models, which you can use most of the time unless you need the deep reasoning, then you can have up to 70 million tokens. Now, what this translates to on average is about 40 or 50,000 messages per month, again, depending on how you use this. Now, obviously, if you start doing things like tons of image generation or videos, that's going to be more expensive and use more compute points. Okay, so that's the thing, that's the usage, that's how it works, you can track all of it from here. For me, this is totally sufficient, I'm not using this you know, hours upon hours every single day, and if you are using it a moderate amount, which I believe most of you probably are, then I think this makes a lot of sense, and obviously you can buy more compute points as well if you want to do that. Okay, so let's get into the main feature here, which is the router. So the interesting thing is, right, like we have all these different LLMs and all these LLMs are good at different types of tasks, but it's kind of annoying to try to distinguish which ones are better at which. So instead of doing that, you can have the router just automatically send it to the correct LLM based on what you're asking it. So let's just ask something simple like, I need some advanced coding assistance and let's see what this actually routes the request to. So give this a second here and you can see that it's going to Claude Sonnet 3.5, which is currently the best model other than the 3.7, which you can use on here as well for coding. Now, in this case, it makes sense to go to Claude 3.5, right? Now, if I ask it something like, you know, I'm not feeling well, I need mental support, help me. We should hopefully go to a more emotional model. So let's see if it switches it. And there we go. We go to GPT 4.1, which is better at handling these types of situations. Now you can manually change them here, obviously, if there's one that you do want to use, and you can regenerate this with various other LLMs. So if I want to go with 4.0, for example, which is maybe a little bit cheaper, let's see what this gives us. You can see that it has a little bit of a different personality when it's responding back to us. So for me already, this is a super useful feature because I am doing a lot of different tasks when I use these AI tools, and I don't like constantly constantly switching screens or UIs or opening different applications. And here I can just do it in one with a single button press or just let it kind of route the request automatically. Obviously, if you want some deep reasoning, you can go with 3.7. You can go with some of the other kind of state of the art models, Gemini 2.5, or you can go with the really cheap ones, right? Like DeepSeek or 4.0 Mini or things along those lines. Now, of course, this also has the ability to do things like chat with PDFs or some RAG functionality. So you might have seen recently, I actually posted a job posting for a program 
program coach for a mentorship program I'm launching quite soon. So I have a PDF that kind of outlines all this stuff. So let's say I wanted to ask some questions about that. I could just drag it in here like you see. So now it's kind of in the chat and I can say something like, can you, you know, summarize this for me with my horrible typing uh, and let's see what we get. All right, so there we go. We get a quick summary. You know, Dev launches a four month mentorship program, et cetera, et cetera. And not only can this chat with PDFs, but can also generate multiple types of files as well. So maybe I wanted to modify this PDF slightly and actually get a new PDF as the output. Well, if you look down here, there's all kinds of actions that you can kind of select that you want to be doing. So, for example, PowerPoint generation, deep research, coding, and I can do things like generate a document as well. So I'm going to go with uh, uh, what do you call it? Generate document. I'm going to take this document again and just put it in here. I'm going to say, make a copy of this, but adjust the salary to 3K per month and the hours to 20 to 25 per week, and then write a more intensive job description. Okay. And let's see if it can do that. All right, so the document was generated here. It gave me a Word doc, so I just opened it up here in Google Docs, and you can kind of see what it looks like. So we have the program coach, updated the salary, it adjusted the hours as well here, and kind of changed the job description to make it a little bit more intensive. So let's close that. I uh, also just show you another thing this can do. It can generate PDFs or sorry, PowerPoints as well. Now uh, you can also convert this to a PDF actually, but that's something I've looked for from quite a few AI tools. And I noticed that they struggled to do that. Now this one is not the best PowerPoint in the world. Obviously it's its first shot at it. I didn't give it any design guidelines, but I told it like, Hey, I want to create a training guide for some of my staff. So they understand like the flow of our program that we're about to do. And you can see that it kind of created this slide for me. It also came up with like this detailed plan beforehand so that I knew exactly like what the slides would actually be and I could confirm that and then it asked me you know what kind of theme do you want so I selected modern and this is what we got now again this isn't the most you know beautiful thing in the world but it's a pretty good start to a PowerPoint it's at least got all of the data in there that I was looking for so kind of an interesting feature to be honest this can do so many things like I can't show it all in this video it has deep research has all this other stuff but I think what will be interesting to you guys is probably more of the coding related stuff because a lot of times I do kind of mix and match between using a coding editor versus using like an online kind of chat interface like this so with chat LLM it actually has a GitHub integration built in. So if I go to connect GitHub here, just give this a second, it will actually connect to the GitHub. I already signed into my account, so that's why it's here. And I can just pick any project and have that context brought right in here to chat LLM. Okay, so let's pick this one here, which is the React full stack application. Just wait for it to load. I'm just gonna add all of the files here to the context window and let's give this a second and then I'll kind of chat with the GitHub repository and let's see what it can do. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell this, can you describe this code base in detail and give me any suggestions for improvements? And um, let's see what it does here, kind of using all of the code from this application. Okay, so you can see it's analyzing here. Also notice it routed over here to Claude Sonnet 3.5. Now, if we wanted to change that, we can, but that probably is the best choice for this and probably the most economical. So let's give this a sec. All right, so you can see that we got our response here. I'll analyze the code base. Let me analyze, let me check this stuff. Now I have a good understanding of the application. Let me provide a detailed analysis. So it gives us the architecture. We have an authentication system here using Django, JWT-based authentication. API structure, okay, database, some component structure here for the front end. And then it gives us some code suggestions here, obviously in Python and I believe in React as well, uh, in order to kind of make this better. As you can see, that's what we get. Now, obviously this is in like, you know, the chat interface. So you're probably not want, gonna wanna be like copying the code over to your editor, especially when we do have AI code editors. However, with this subscription, you actually get access to code LLM, which is Abacus's AI code editor. It's very similar to the ones you guys have probably used before. I'm gonna open it up. It's just a fork on VS code, kind of a clone of VS code. Same as you've normally seen, you have a chat, you have an agent, uh, and you can run all of your AI queries directly inside of here. And again, you have the same usage uh, as your kind of main account. So for example, if I go to agent, I'm just going to copy in a prompt here and I'm going to say, Hey, can you help me add features to this app and make it more clear to see the expenses with charts and graphs, etc.? Then it will go to this code and do that. So let's just hit enter for some context here. This is kind of an expense tracking application. I built it in Python. It's actually for a tutorial that I'll be doing soon. And you can see here that just like you wouldn't any AI code editor, 
it's kind of going through it's making these adjustments and let me actually just run this so you can see what it looks like before and after okay so this is what the app looks like before you can just drag in a simple file and then it's going to show you a kind of a categorization of all of the expenses that you have and you can see like a little pie chart here and then you can also go to like the payments and you can see all the payments that have been made this is just a random bank statement that i brought in just kind of as an example so pretty simple now what i told this to do is just improve this right and make it better add some more charts make it more visual so let's see what that looks like okay so this is the new app here now with those changes you can see it looks a bit better we have kind of this better expense summary it tells us the largest the average daily spend we have spending patterns category trends monthly breakdowns a time series chart pretty interesting in order uh, to kind of analyze the finances. Now, obviously this is probably not why you would buy this subscription. For me, it's a nice bonus because it's completely free and it is just using the same AI models that you're gonna be using anyways from whatever AI code editor you're using. So I think it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, and I did wanna show it to you because I think it's a nice bonus, especially if you find you're not overly relying on the AI code editors and you just want one kind of for free to use per month without having to pay those subscriptions. So again, code LLM comes for free with the chat LLM subscription. All right, so that's kind of the coding component here. A few unique features, but at the end of the day, you're really just utilizing these base models because that's what's really doing most of the work. But I will show you the image generation because that's pretty interesting. So if you go here to image, you can choose the image provider you wanna use. So there's a bunch of them, to be honest, I don't use these very often, so I don't know what the best one is. Let's go with like Flux 1.1 Pro Ultra because that sounds the fanciest. Uh, and let's give it some kind of crazy prompt. I'm gonna say, you know, a photorealistic image of a cyberpunk, Tokyo street at night, glowing neon signs and Japanese puddles reflecting the light on the wet asphalt. Let, let's see if we can do this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and press generate. We'll get one image here uh, and I'll show you what it looks like once it's done. Okay. So there we go. That is a pretty impressive image. Uh, I haven't messed with these image gens too much, so I don't know exactly what they're capable of, but to me, like that's pretty much exactly what I asked for. So yeah, obviously you can do that. Now you can generate videos as well. I haven't messed with this feature too much because obviously I have video editors and I make videos myself, but they do have that. They have lip, sy lip syncing, sorry. I can't show all this stuff in, in this video. It's gonna be crazy long if I do that. Okay, so that's cool. But the last major thing I wanna show you here is called the AI engineer. Now I'm not gonna demo this right now because it does take a second to set up, but if you guys want a full video on it, let me know and I will make that. This allows you to make custom chatbots and AI agents that you can interact with and that you can use in something like Slack, for example. So let's say you have like a bunch of company information related to onboarding, like I might have, then you can set up a database, you can give that access or you give a chatbot story access to that. And then you can actually integrate this with like Slack, for example. So you can have a Slack channel where you go in there, you type information and you get data back that's relevant to your company. So you can just kind of make all of these automations clear. So you don't need to keep copying and pasting in the same prompts. If you have data sets you want to use, for example, you could have those already accessible via the AI model and then same things with the AI agents. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Like if we go into, you know, create an AI agent, it will kind of walk you through the process step by step. So again, like I just don't have enough time here for in this video to break it down for you. But you can see this is like kind of a quick example of what it would look like. Okay, now there's a lot of stuff you can do here. And just to give you a quick sense of kind of what's possible, I'm going to show you this configuration page where you can see that you can add like notebooks, for example, you can have feature groups, you can add data sets, uh, you can have a monitoring dashboard, you can add governance for your agents or chatbots and kind of how they work. You can see you can have pipelines, uh, you can check out the schedules, like there's so much stuff. Again, really, this does require another video in order for me to really break it down in depth. Uh, and that's kind of it in terms of the agents or what I'm going to cover in this video. Now, if we go back just to route LLM here, uh, I will just mention that this is multiplayer which is another huge benefit of this. So if you are an organization, for example, then you can have multiple people all using this application and sharing the same projects, the same context, the same chatbots, the same agents. So you don't need to keep rebuilding things multiple times. And I think as an organization, that's quite valuable because again, if I've been using this a lot and it understands me, it knows my organization, it knows the work that I'm doing. I don't want to have to recreate that in a new instance or a new chat window or a new application. So I can just invite a team member and they can immediately start and use all of that context. So if I go up here, for example, I can press on invite team and then, you know, I can invite team members and I can add them to the project. I can choose their permissions and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of how that works. 
So anyways, guys, that is going to wrap up this video. I think this is a very valuable tool. It's definitely something that I'm going to be using a lot more in the future because it just has everything in one platform. And once you get all your information on here and you're chatting with it a lot, it's just kind of a no brainer to use this and be able to switch between all of the various different models, share the context, all of that kind of stuff. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments down below. And if you want to see a video on the AI agents and the uh, chatbots, then I'll definitely do that. And I look forward to seeing you in another one. Thank you.